Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 25 of the Leak Code Daily Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's forum. So, just a quick update as I do usually about this thing is loading anyway. Um, yeah, let, I'm just curious what, what people, uh, what sports do people watch? I've been watching uh, a lot of playoffs, hockey and basketball uh, lately. Let me know if you're a Warriors fan or Boston fan or whatever. Uh, been some exciting situation going on, but uh, yeah. Anyway, today's problem is Russian doll envelopes. Okay, so given a 2D array of envelopes, where envelopes I okay, width and height. One envelope, if both the width and height are greater than each other's width and height, can you rotate them? Okay, actually, I just see the note. Return the maximum number of elements you can wash and doll. Um, so yeah, so this is basically a dynamic programming problem. Uh, this is what you would say is the longest um, increasing subsequence or something like that, right? Um, <clears throat> this one is kind of tricky though because, well, it first is n is 10 to the fifth. So, um, and the standard longest increasing subsequence uh, is n square, right? But of course, there is an n log n version uh, that, uh, and that's probably the thing that we're going to get. And I think, to be honest, it's kind of really hard to, um, it's really hard to understand this problem. I think <clears throat> if you don't have a strong grasp of the longest increasing subsequence uh, problem, especially the n log n one, um, unless I'm missing something really obvious. But yeah. Um, and the idea behind that is using binary search based on invariant. Uh, to be honest, the longest it's not my strongest point. So we're gonna see, but we can, but we can see how we can reduce this, by, to the longest increasing subsequence, and then see if we can n log n it. So the, it's the longest increasing subsequence because, um, well. Another way to say it is a longest path in a DAG, right? A DAG because you can draw edges between two envelopes if um, if the width and the height is greater than the other one or something like that, or the other way around, depending on how you want to do it. And because it is, this is strictly greater than, um, you know, it, it's uh, going to be asymmetric, right? Um, you know, if A is greater than B, there's no way B is greater than A. So th th that's already satisfied the definition of a DAG, and from that you can do it. Um, the tricky part about this is just trying to figure out a way such that um, we could abuse uh, or take advantage of the ordering that is in the system. Um, and they really, and I don't really have a great intuitive sense for this one, um, other than that. Um, and this is you know me just being an honest. This is me usually solving live, so it's not me being like, oh, I'm so smart, I know how to, you know. I mean, sometimes I ask, I guess I am doing that, but for this one, I don't know, so I'm going to tell you that I don't know. And But I do know that there are really only four possible orderings, right, on width and height. We can either sort by width, sort by height. We could, maybe there's more than four, but um, depending on how you want to do it, I guess you can also change the order, but in this case, the, the width and height is symmetric, right? Meaning that if you switch every width to every height, it's the same thing. So, so for that purpose, maybe there's only four. But yeah, and what I mean by that is you search, you you sort by width and then height. You sort by width and then negative height, meaning um, decreasingly on height. You could search by decreasing width and increasing height. Again, that is just. Yeah, there's by symmetry. That's just you go to the second one that we talked about, and then the third one is sort sort by descending order, right? Um, technically they're not the same in the set in the way that, um, because of the ordering. If you go from left to right, then you know it's gonna maybe have some difference. Um, so those are the three uh three ish ways that we're gonna think about, um, and maybe four, I guess. Um, yeah, and then we could see, and then from that it's just about for me anyway especially if I'm doing it from scratch, I'm going to try to see if there's an ordering about that, right? So, because for example, what, uh, the next step that I'm thinking about, which I guess I didn't really talk about it articulately, um, is that if we sort by width and then height, right? What does that mean? That means that, that means that 
you know, let's say we sort. Um, let's just actually do it, right? Because I'm too lazy to type it out. If we sort by width and then height, what does that mean? What that means is that given this, given this sorted uh, uh, envelopes, what that means is that as you go from left to right, this one's actually a little bit bad in that uh, or it just coincidentally, it's a bad example. Okay, let me use another example um, because I want one where um, they're not quite uh, lined up quite as neatly. So maybe two, seven, uh, four, I don't know. I'm just doing random numbers really. Um, right? And this is how I would play with, with a problem that I don't understand. Um, you know, this one I have some hints, but I don't know the answer. I mean, I know the answer, but I don't know which way it is. Um, or like I have an idea, and this is my guess, um, and this is what I'm going to do, right? So basically for this one, for example, if you now get rid of the width, um, even getting rid of the getting rid of the width, um, for example, we have now three seven, one eight four four seven, just the height. Well, we know that as we go from left to right, uh, it's not quite true because um, because uh, of the tie breaking situation. But in theory, or if you make some modifications, going from left to right, you know that if this number is bigger than this number, then the width is at least the same height, right? And in the same way, um, if you're going from eight to seven, well, you know that the the I keep saying keep saying the width, but the width component of this is going to be bigger or equal to the width component of that. And from that, so one thing that I noticed, right, as as we talk about that, and the exception is that you know the twos they they are the same, so these will not be. Um, like if you try to put the three and the seven, that won't quite work. So then the idea here now then is play around with, um, yeah, so envelope, we sort it by e sub one, oh, sorry, uh, e sub zero, and then e, negative e sub one. So decreasing order on the second element. And then now what do we get? Right? <clears throat> now, now, so we have this this array after we our new sorting algorithm, and then now we only take the y. I'm going to say x y instead of width and height, but the y component just because it's easier to say, and also for me just more intuitive. Um, and then now, if you have a number that's afterwards, so basically the property that we we're discovering is that if for a sub i or if y sub i if no, let me just write it out if y sub i is less than y sub j then x sub i is less than x sub j right so that's basically the idea that we're that that's the ordering that we're doing right and now because now that we sort it this way and now we have this um we have the and we take the y component this is now strictly speaking um, longest increasing subsequence, right? And then now, if you just plug in the longest increasing subsequence formula uh, or algorithm, then it should work. Of course, if you do it naively with the dynamic programming, it's going to be n square. There is, like I said, the n log n uh, way, and that is the way that we're going to do. Um, uh, I just double check to see that we're recording the uh, the right screen because I feel like I've been doing that a couple of times lately. But uh, but yeah. So then now, so now we have envelopes and then we just have, yeah, so then now for the, 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 the y in envelopes, because now we have this property that we set, right? Um, so then now we could do this. Oops. Um, and then here, um, this part, it's a little bit, tougher to explain um, if you haven't already seen it before but the idea here is that you have a dyne, uh, you have an array right and basically
basically, what what is this best way? Right, best is you go to the um, or best sub i is you go to the 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 smallest element, um, the smallest last element that has uh, of a of an increasing subsequence of length i, right? Um, and in the beginning, of course, the base case is that for a zero element, um, we have negative infinity. And then here, the, tr the part is that we do a binary search. Um, and why do we do a binary search? Because there are only um, there are two cases, right? And we'll go over them in a sec. It's kind of uh, a proof by kind of proof by case analysis. It's not the best proof, I don't think, but that's the proof that I'm going to go with today for now because it's kind of an involving um, idea. And I definitely urge those of you at home, um, come to my Discord or leave a comment um, asking questions about this um, because it is way tricky to get. Um, the understanding is critical, but it is tricky to get it right if you... Um, yeah, it's just way tricky. Um, but I'll go over the two cases, right? So... But, do we want bisect left? No, we want strictly greater than. So, yeah. Best of y, right? And then this is index. But basically, the idea is that we're trying to find this, the smallest number. Where are we? Yeah. Uh, we're, we're trying to find the long. Sorry, let me. Sorry, I have to say it again because it's very easy to mess up. That's why I pause. My bad. You're trying to find the longest. So given this y that we, so we're given a number now, right? We're trying to find the longest increasing subsequence that you can add this to, and as, as it turns out, um, this array is going to be and um, it's going to be monotonically increasing. Because you can kind of, it's not quite exactly true, but but um, but the way that uh, is an emergent property of this is that it is uh, the best array is going to be increasing because if you add a number to the array, um, by definition, the number you know the binary search the number is going to be between two numbers in the in the best array. And in between those two numbers, you're gonna so okay, there are two cases, right? Let me let me go over. There are two cases. So either let's say best is you go to uh some array that's like you know negative infinity as it always be, uh zero, one, five, six, right? Or oh, okay, that's a seven, but and then now we try to insert y is equal to three, right? Well, three is of course gonna be within this array, and then um and then here, the longest that you can add this to is just the number two, uh, or like the, the index three, um, and then you convert this to three. And of course, if you with, with this logic, um, you can see that the in monotonically increasing array properly is held, right? Because by definition, you're getting a number that is in between, so then you just change one of the number. So there is a, I don't know if that's a fundamentally fundamental value theorem or whatever, but that, the idea is that you can really change it, right? So if you want to draw a graph, um, okay, let me actually draw a graph real, really quickly to prove this visually a little bit. I'm not going to use my thingy, uh, my drawing thing, because I, I think uh, I think it should be okay. But yeah, but basically you have, you know, a chart, right? And then you have a line that, you know, you have a monotonically increasing thing. That's basically, you know, something like that, right? So this is a line that keeps going up, right? So then the idea here is that let's say, you know, you're doing binary search to find, uh, you know, some number that's like here, right? Uh, let, let's make it straighter. Uh, let's say here, right? Then what you want to do is actually just move you know, in a visual way. Oh, what happened to my thingy? I can't change my color for some reason. Hmm. 
Okay, my, my finger is a little bit messed up, but you get that. Okay, let me redraw this because there's like no space. But the idea here is that the binary search is just that, you know, given this line, find the, where it intersects. That's kind of what the binary search is doing. But then next, you move this downwards now uh, so that now it connects this way, right? And as you can see, it's all, always going to still keep going up because that's the definition of how we're doing binary search. So that's one way of doing it, right? The other one, of course, is let's say now you're increasing a really big number, so 100. Well, now you're just adding it to the end. And of course, by definition, you're adding it to the end, it's always going to be increasing. So that's basically the idea here. Um, I don't think I'm, I'm very comprehensive about this explanation, to be frank. So definitely play around, go over it by yourself, and kind of see where this comes from. But yeah, so if index is greater than e goes to less than a uh, uh, length of by then we do, 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 do else best of index is equal to y right and then at the way end we return length of best because i think this minus one because we have a zero index but uh but yeah i think this should be good maybe hopefully otherwise i just said a lot of stuff and be wrong about it Oh, snap. Oh, hmm. Maybe I have some weirdness. Oh, I see. I was thinking bisect right because we want, because I thought that on a tie breaking thing, you want to extend it. But I was wrong in that by doing that, the tie breaking means that you add it to the chain if it's the same. So, I, so that I made a mistake on. This is why you test. But, uh, but I think just changing the bisect left should be good. Uh, yeah, and, and that's why. But uh, And we saw that debugging and, and how it was quickly is because I made a lot of mistakes in the past and sometimes you just learn from it. And also there's really not many places. But when you saw that this input is 3, there's really only one, uh, the second input. When, when, when my output is 3, there's really only one way is 3, right? If it's have a chain of 3. Um, so that's how I was able to debug it quickly. Let's give it a submit and hopefully that's good. Uh, how did I get time limit? exceeded before hmm. hopefully this is good yep this is good but oh, wow I, timing is pretty slow though so but yeah um as you can see there's n iterations log n and log n gg well played uh that's the time and complexity is gonna be o of n or o of c or for for the size of the output if you want to do context sensitive answer um that's fine too um, yeah, I'm just gonna, uh, curious what I did last time. How, why is it so much faster? Did they just add more test cases? No, it just seems like they added more test cases. Seems like I did the same thing exactly. Uh, what did I do? The, did I just do the n square one? Yeah, I don't know. Why did I, maybe I just misread it because it's 10 to the fifth. There's no way this would have passed, but uh, but maybe I was just showing it or something. I don't know. And now I didn't see plus plus. Oh, hmm. Why did I do it n squared and C plus plus two? Uh, that's weird. Okay. No, this is this is n squared. I wonder if they just added more test cases as they go, because th maybe there was a time when this was n squared and it was okay, um, because clearly that's an n squared solution. Though, yeah, this is n squared and it's still too slow, so maybe not. I don't know. Hmm. But, but for ten to the fifth, it should not even be that close to time limit exceeded so i don't know anyway that's all i have for today let me know what you think stay good stay healthy to good mental health i'll see you later and take care bye bye